On June the 4th, 1984, the author and producer of cultural films, Paul Pisanos, invited to the offices of his company in Athens approximately 80 people to announce to them an idea of his that was original and bold in inspiration. That Greece was to become again as it was 2,000 years ago in the period of the Golden Age of Pericles, a world center of letters, arts, and sciences. A meeting center for the heads of state, academic institutions, leading scientists, researchers, philosophers, and artists from every corner of the globe. A meeting center for collaborating and directing the common endeavor of spreading peace, morality, reason, and wisdom to the peoples of the world in a spirit of love, cooperation, cultural progress, and peaceful coexistence. Paul Pisanos's idea was accepted with intense enthusiasm, and in the same year, 1984, personalities from many countries of the world, among whom were academicians, university professors, scientists, politicians, authors, and researchers, mayors of large cities and artists, constituted the founding membership of an association which today consists of several hundred members, who are determined to play a decisive role in the furtherance of letters, arts, and sciences in the societies of the world. In this difficult age, it has been clearly demonstrated that the decline in human values, the dire manner of life of the people of the third world, immigration, unemployment, famine, poverty, and wars, the inadequate management of the planet's pollution, the growing quality decline of the ecosystem, Even the sluggish progress of human travel in space are due to the segregation of social institutions and research and experimentation centers, particularly in the countries of the Western world, each one separately with its own financial resources, trying to provide solutions to problems for which only the collective cooperation of all the peoples of the Earth could structurally produce the desired result. The world today. For Paul Pisanos, the bread and wine of his idea, its deepest sense of the establishment of a universal city, lies in the way sages, scientists, technocrats and researchers could cooperate in the same city through collective efforts that relate to peace and prosperity of peoples and the salvation of the ecosystem so that the economic cost on the level of research, experimentation and application would be as small as possible, while the results would be as great as possible. The official measurements show that the Earth's population continues to grow. Unemployment and poverty of nations has exceeded all limits of tolerance, and cash deficits in a global economy that is constantly in the red have become a scourge. Humanity is facing a painful, dangerous tendency of transfer of active forces of science and technology, the basic cause of which is global wealth flowing from the productive forces to the brokers and the banks. If the politicians of the world, the heads of state, as well as the major academic forces of culture and science, do not take the appropriate decisions for a collective global integration of science, technology and wisdom, in order to establish justice, a healthy economy, and the equitable distribution of scientific knowledge and the flow of money in the hands of productive forces, the poor who have not eaten and the planet that is suffocating will show their claws. Let us bow with respect before this global problem which affects us all. Let us boldly accept with conscious commitment and determination, each separately, our responsibilities towards humanity, the planet and God. And let us look with profound insight upon the work of the Heptapolis as our common property, our common neighborhood, where our common struggle for knowledge, for peace, for social and scientific progress and application of justice will make us all happier. Heptapolis, 
International Green City, Global Geometrical Model. The history of our solar system has no scientifically proven beginning. However, the perfection of its operation leads to the conclusion that it had no beginning and that it is eternal, for perfection has no beginning and no end. The quest for the principles that govern perfection constitutes the highest expression of human knowledge. When Pythagoras taught his students, he urged them to observe carefully nature, humanity and the universe and to compare the movements, forms and styles on the basis of single digit numbers and geometric shapes. The golden number which constituted the principles of the perfect form, the perfect shape and the perfect motion was 1.618. The Pythagorean architectural structures, the golden number, and the cosmic meter from the main pillars of creation of the Heptapolis. The universe of the celestial sphere, with seven equal circles that adorn the area of a larger circle, and together make up the holy Tetractis of Pythagoras, became the main model of the architectural creation of Heptapolis. In this steel likeness of the sacred Tetractis of Pythagoras, we observe that if the universe is judged as unified, enclosed within its absolute monad, the four rays of the Tetractis have bound the forces of the positive and the negative and all together certify the self-existent monad, the creator, God. Again, according to Pythagoras, when God decides to self-manifest, God becomes dual, male and female the generative substance of the absolute monad. When in the next move, God wants to create nature, humanity and the world, God becomes triple. This is the physical, this is the human and this is the divine world. For the three Pythagorean worlds to function, the forces of the positive and the negative have to be separated, with the result that the opposite tendencies of these forces unite, thus constituting the principle for every form created. This Pythagorean model of the creation of the world became the geometric model of Heptapolis, with the cosmic and golden number 1.618 as the dominant measure in the relations of the structures, volumes, shapes and distances. Paul Pisanos created, along with a renowned researcher in Pythagoreanism, the civil engineer and mathematician Hippocrates Dacoglu, a dynamic team of inspired architects and engineers who labored for many months trying to construct and create a geometric city in which each structure in relation to every other and in relation to the whole of the city is connected by the golden number and at the same time a city that would be beautiful, classical, hospitable, livable and above all functional and sustainable so that the people who will inhabit it and work in it will feel happy and productive. For the study and purpose of each building of Heptapolis, Paul Pisanos enlisted academics, professors, historians, constitutional lawyers, judges, sociologists, and professors of international relations, artists, and in particular, philosophers, and persuaded them to work beside him without pay, so as to conceive in its whole and in its parts a city of nations that can respond to all the evolving needs of every age, every society in the countries of East and West. The unprecedented zeal and love of an entire scientific army of Greeks who worship their homeland and seek the good of mankind brought after many years of hard work the unprecedented result of completing an enormous study of way of thought to solve the paramount problems of humanity by means of an international city.
It was never asked of any private or public entity to help finance the hundreds of associates who were members of the Olympos Association who worked on the drafting of the project proposal Heptapolis, dedicated to Earth and man, to every nation and every religion in the coming centuries. The selection of the site that will in future become the universal intellectual center of arts and sciences was carefully made by the administrative members of the association. The small village of Styri in Viotia, 135 kilometers from Athens, commands a view of the majestic mountainous volume of mythological Mount Parnassus, and it lies within the limits of the primordial navel of the earth, Delphi, and the sanctuary of Apollo. It was considered ideal by the scientific council of the association, and it was decided that we should build Heptapolis there. Nearby, the historic village of Distamo is the space that spans the second half of the city, which will include outside its walls the green luxurious hotels, the new traditional villages for the stay of visitors, and many modern tourist facilities. On the road to Delphi, in the Arachova area, shall be built the center of Delphic Amphictyony, which is one of the major activities of Heptapolis. A few kilometers from Styri, the majestic Byzantine monastery of St. Luke will be the religious attraction of visitors to Heptapolis. Here in this region that extends all around us, we will build the city that belongs to all citizens of the societies of the world. On the side of the sunrise, there will be a centralized gate of light. In the west, with Mount Parnassus in the background, the Acropolis of the Heptapolis will be built. In the entire surrounding area will be built the sports palace, museums, science centers, conference centers, centers of arts and letters, the World Center of UNESCO, and the Academy of Nations of Heptapolis. Close your eyes and try, in this frosty age, to feel the beauty of the finest city in the world envelop you. Join us to experience, with our time machine, the great dream that will mark the history of mankind. Meet Heptapolis. Heptapolis will be a global ecological geometric model city. Imagine a huge cake, three stories high of unequal size. The zoster or belt, the kitaron or cell, and the pirin or nucleus with the tholos or dome. The first great circle will include, in seven petala of equal parts, the building complexes on the ground floor level of the city. In each of the petala, on the outer curved side will extend the Olympia walls of Heptapolis at a height of seven meters, while at their intersections will be placed the seven gates of Heptapolis. From where the sun rises on March the 21st each year, the imaginary line of the radius of the vernal equinox which crosses the Heptapolis, would cut the city into two halves. These will be the dominant geometric coordinates of Heptapolis, the relation of the elliptical motion of Earth around the Sun in our solar system. The day of the equinox, March the 21st of each year, will be institutionalized as an official feast day of Heptapolis. The equinox celebration will be dedicated to protecting the natural environment in both equal hemispheres of the planet. On this day will be judged and awarded all the yearly efforts of private, corporate and government entities in the world that worked for the rescue, improvement and development of fauna and flora, the ecosystem, the earth as a bearer of life and all beings and phenomena, with man as the protagonist. Heptapolis, in addition to road and water networks, will be connected with a magnetic train in the areas of Levadia, Thebes, Arachova, Delphi, Antikyra, and St. Luke. 
From two underground entrances and exits of the underground magnetic train, travelers can easily and conveniently reach the central gate of light. For every visitor and every citizen of Earth who may have a mobility problem, the designers have foreseen that he will be able, all by himself, to enter into the city, to visit all the buildings that are located at all levels of the city. And with the GPS system to be supplied at the main gate, listen to the language desired to describe any building complex or statue or artwork he sees before him. In front of the entrance to Heptapolis, Greece crowns Alexander. In this marvelous sculpture, Alexander is depicted seated on a throne. In his left hand, he holds victory. In his right hand, he holds a scepter topped with a swallow that sends the message, he who will come again. At the foot of Alexander are two lions, symbols of power. At the bottom of the pedestal are history and glory. Standing behind him, Greece crowns her great child. From the entrance colonnade, the visitor can admire the geometric layout of Heptapolis. At the top, we read the doctrine of Pythagoras. Revere geometry and arithmetic, proportion and symmetry, because these are the knowledge of God. According to the ancient Greek myth, Zeus once sent from Mount Olympus one eagle eastward and another westward in order to determine the center of the world. The two eagles met over the region of Delphi, which has been characterized ever since as navel of the earth. The Heptapolis is located within the inner boundaries of the region of Delphi. The two eagles of Zeus at the roof of the Gate of Light symbolize the meeting of the great forces in the center of the earth. Further back, the Delphic tripod symbolizes the trophy of the battle between Apollo and Python. Right and left, Athena and Apollo oversee the knowledge and the light which must govern the decisions of the great forces concerning the fortunes of humanity. On the facade of the gate we read, If you have labored for the good and the useful, and have participated in Hellenic education, you may enter. Crossing the central gate of Heptapolis to enter the second level of the Zoster, one must pass under the giant volume of the Alexander the Great Library, which will be the largest library in the world. All member states of the United Nations will participate in an ecumenical collection of bibliography from all forms of books, film, papyri, inscriptions engraved with figures and scenes, costumes, weapons, household utensils, and digital programs, CDs, and DVDs. The Alexander the Great Library will be linked electronically with the largest libraries and collections of the cultural world for better and more complete information for every citizen of every country in every language. Coming to the second level of the city, the Zoster, we see behind us the inner side of the library that has a perimeter of 2,700 meters and a total of seven floors. The entire wing is composed of 360 Doric columns that geometrically enclose the Zoster, located at points of reference to the circumnavigation of the Earth around the Sun in 360 degrees of revolution. Along the entire length of the wing of the library, the visitor can admire classic paintings of the life and work of Alexander the Great. The moment the visitor arrives at the Zoster, the first grand building that he admires is the European Palace. On his way to the European Palace building, he can admire the Statue of Europe where, according to myth, Zeus, transformed into a bull, carries Europa. To the right, the fountain of the rights of the planet. To the left, the fountain of human rights. 
At the far left, in the large park, Freedom Square, and to the right, Justice Square. This is the European Palace. It will house all the services of the member states of the European Union, which will work towards common goals of human rights and the resolution of the problems of immigration. Here, European leaders will meet and cooperate with the leading actors of science, technology and philosophy, so that they will take decisions on a European level relating to the advancement of literature, the arts and sciences. Here, joint decisions will be taken in the presence of all representatives of member states for the spiritual growth and prosperity of the European citizen, for technological progress and for the salvation of the ecosystem. In the large aesthetic buildings of the Zoster, the visitor can participate in events dedicated to the spiritual and mental growth of man. There will be a classical education center which will hold conferences, seminars and round tables that will relate to the principles, codes and laws under which the person will raise his character to the level of the moral life, honorable decision making and cultural excellence so as to become an embodiment of humanity at its best. There will also be a classical philosophy center and a world philosophy center where the greatest Greek philosophers and philosophers of Europe, America, Asia, Egypt, Israel and Arab countries in general and all the nations of the world that have created schools of thought will be taught in seminars to guests of the Zoster. In the History of Science Center, students and free visitors can attend special seminars to promote science in different branches of science as developed by the peoples and countries of the Western and Eastern Hemispheres from ancient times till today. The Metropolitan Globus will be a world convention center of promotion of literature, the arts and sciences. The center will contain lecture halls with 5,000, 3,000, 1,500 and 500 seats. In the fine art center of the Zoster, free workshop studies will operate in sculpture, painting, engraving, handicrafts, architecture, urban planning, set design and other arts. On the south side of the Zoster will be special building complexes such as the Lyceum, the Medical Applications Center and the Center for Experimental and Applied Electronics. On the southwestern side of the Zoster will be built large shopping centers with shops selling hand-picked inventory, restaurants and cafes, cinemas, theaters, an ice rink, seminar rooms, cinemas, display rooms for educational documentaries, booksellers and applied technology centers. The Space Center is a specially designed space area in which the visitor can enter a cosmic vehicle to travel the solar system and galaxies. West of the Zoster will be the building complex Agora. In the Agora studios will be operating shooting historical educational films with laboratories for audio and visual production, studios for cartoons and 3D animations, a school of dramatic arts, cinematography and television. Here the luxurious Festival Palace will be the venue of an annual science festival of film and television programs. Here, the International Commercial Audiovisual Forum will operate, which will screen the winning films and documentaries with reception halls for producers and directors who devote their work to man, culture, nature and salvation of the ecosystem. 
Here in the Agora of the Zoster, there will be exhibition areas of commercial items, fashion jewelry, engineering goods, books in philosophy, art and science, and computer applications areas. Here there will be art galleries, theatres of the arts and art cinema to present works by young artists. Here there will be cafes of ideas for friendly and useful meetings of politicians, writers, directors, actors, poets and musicians. Here there will be special restaurants with ancient Greek food and souvenir items for tourists and children. On the north side of Zoster, majestic classical buildings will house exhibits that relate to the history of man's attempt to conquer earth, air, sea and space. Here there will be a wax museum that presents the greatest personalities in letters, arts and sciences in world history. Here there will be a museum of the history of the automobile, museum of minerals and herbs, museum of the history of aviation, navigation, numismatics and currency. The Cosmos Center Museum will present the development of space science. Original and facsimile models of spacecraft and simulations of the visit of man to the moon and other planets in the future will attract the interest of visitors. The Melathra of the Zoster Straight across from the European palace, we come to the Melathra, or palaces, of the Zoster. Imagine a giant clock with a diameter of about 400 meters, which encloses with 12 bands the Kitaron of the Heptapolis. This watch, unique in the world, is at coordinates which fix the vernal equinox, which would establish the geometrical relationship of the building blocks of Heptapolis. Twelve luxurious melathra, similar to each other, represent the twelve signs of a classic hour clock, whose running time would be indicated by a laser from the center of the top of the dome, the deeper meaning of which is the moral duty of man to exploit the time on projects for the good of humanity. The timetable of the twelve melathra will include the Vuleftirion, with the administrative services and meeting rooms for members of the Heptapolis. The citizens of the world melathron, with agencies for the planning and coordination of occupational, educational and social support of immigrants in the world. The Orpheus melathron, with concert halls, conservatory, musical education halls in classical and modern music, exhibition stands of musical instruments. The Phidias Melathron for international sculpture exhibition, painting, printmaking, carpentry, interior design, architecture, land planning and urban planning. The Apollo Melathron in whose halls will be exhibited museum finds in art and culture from all over the world. The Thales Melathron will be a world center of inventions, scientific findings and discoveries, with laboratories for new ideas and innovations. The Amphictyons Melathron, which is the sister building of the Delphic Amphictyony of Heptapolis. Here, recognized authorities will convene from all over the world who will discuss peace, the brotherhood of peoples, and the union of social and scientific institutions for the protection of Earth and the ecosystem. The Anaxagoras Melathron will act as an international museum of paleontological finds, human, animal, fish, and birds. The Democritus Melathron will operate as a planetarium with a concave projection chamber 
documentaries, seminar rooms, and bookshops on space science. The Gaia Melathron encompasses a world museum of natural history and oceanography, an aquarium for observation of living creatures of the deep seas, and a museum of fossils of marine creatures and plants. In the Themis Melathron will be the courts and security authorities of Heptapolis, and the administrative services for protection of visitors to Heptapolis. In the Hermes Melathron operates the World Press Center, electronic press and public information and international collaborations with the information centers for scientific, artistic and academic communication and publication. If the cell of each living organism represents the archetype that structures its existence, the cells of the Heptapolis represent the archetype of classical education that builds judgment and spirit in the consummate citizen of Earth. Located in an absolute Pythagorean architectural schema, the buildings of the Kitaron, or cell, will host each year about 12,000 students selected by the ministries of education in their countries who, after obtaining the master's degree from universities from which they graduated, will be attending Heptapolis to receive the Kotinos, a degree unique in the world that relates to the use of knowledge. Here, these select citizens of the world will learn the 90 basic sciences of the earth, not only the subject matter of the sciences, but how to use the knowledge acquired in university studies. Here, the classical education at all levels of esoteric knowledge of science and technology will create new thinkers who could activate political, scientific and academic skills at all levels of administration, authority and orientation of peoples to the rule of law and respect for the common good. Here, there will be lodging for students. Here in the Gallery of the Muses, there will be offices and lodging of the deans, the senate, the commissioners and the professors of the schools of the Kitaron. In the nine great schools of the Kitaron, there will be athletic spaces, seminar rooms, research and experimental laboratories, an observatory and spaces for intellectual symposia. In the first six months, the students of the Kitarons will participate in educational events of Zoster while in the remaining six months, they will be trained as initiates within the schools of the Kitaron in difficult Pythagorean conditions of their academic fulfillment. For the visitor to the Heptapolis to enter the third, the highest level, where there is the Pirin and the Tholos, he will have to go through the underground gallery of the Kitaron because free access for any visitor to the Kitaron schools is prohibited. From this entrance, the level of the Zoster, the visitor is led on foot or by automatic transfer mechanisms to the Pirin of the Tholos, some 30 meters above the Zoster. That spherical structure is the Tholos. Here are described with codes, numbers, equations and diagrams the secrets of the creation of human nature and the cosmos as conceived by ancient Greek philosophers and developed by contemporary scientists. Here is an area of contemplation, meditation and study of laws and principles of creation. The tholos is used by academics of Heptapolis and students of the Kitaron in the last stage, the use of knowledge. But for a few hours each day, admission will be permitted to guests. Inside the gigantic spherical tholos, 
with a diameter of about 60 meters, specific mechanisms of advanced technology using lasers and applications of electronic science and applications of the hologram will be used to present to viewers who will be in the theater boxes of the meridian of the Tholos, the panorama of the operation of the microcosm and macrocosm. Here we give the answer to the question, why is the Pythagorean figure of infinity in its kinetic properties hidden in the helical formation of the number 8? And why are the maximum and the minimum and the infinite of the macrocosm equal to 1 in relation to man and to divinity? Here will be explained the paramount purpose of the philosophical and scientific quest in interpreting laws codes and archetypes that construct the entire universe. Here we give the answer to the questions why we came into this world and what the role of man is in the kingdom of creation. On either side of the gate of light of Heptapolis extend the seven petala or horseshoes surrounding the entire city. At three of the petala, the Acropolis and the two ancient theatres will be built, while in the other four petala, the building complexes of Green Planet Earth will be built. Here assembled are the largest research and experimental scientific forces in the world, who, with uniform strategies and methods to tackle the world's problems, will work to save the ecosystem. In each of the four areas of program Green Planet Earth, there will be created research and experimental ecosystem centers. In Zone E, with strict scientific standards, will be investigated and backed by rigorous experimental data, the limiting of consumption, hybrid systems applications, the applications of recycling dispensables and sewage, viability and development sustainability, the sustainable development of mass communications, control of global climate change, ensuring the functioning of the biosphere and biodiversity and dietary changes. Zone K will operate three centers developing green technologies and clean energy. These centers are in constant electronic communication and collaboration with similar centers in technologically advanced countries and will monitor, supervise and ensure a global scale in the following areas of research and testing. Geothermal research, solar thermal surveys, aeolian research. In Zone L, the center for the global control of flora and fauna will be constructed. In that center, scientists will examine the totality of information relating to the risk of extinction of species of the animal and plant worlds. Here, the methodology will be grounded in strict scientific criteria and will provide the required solutions to problems concerning control of animals and plants and the threat of extinction on land, sea and air. In Zone M, the center of control of water resources will operate. We live in a world where the seas and oceans are contaminated. The waters of rivers are contaminated and decreasing continuously. The lakes are transformed into marshes and underground water reservoirs tend to disappear and all because of the lack of a single global rescue package of water resources of the Earth we inhabit. This will work. Rescue control centers for the contamination of water in the oceans, the seas and coastal wetlands. Rescue control centers from contamination of lakes and groundwater and reservoirs affected by nuclear waste. Centers for development and rehabilitation of streams of the earth and converting them into reservoirs, ponds and centers of irrigation of croplands. The international Heptapolis as Green City will be the global model of green technology for the protection of nature and the ecosystem. The mountainous volume of Mount Parnassus, which dominates the entire western side of the city, 
will be transformed into a large ecological park of dense vegetation with beautiful lakes and families of animals. On the west side of Heptapolis, in a geometric petalo, the Acropolis will be built at a total height of 65 meters. In a platform length of 260 meters and a width of 120 meters on the roof of the Acropolis, three buildings of fine marble will be built. This is the Academy of Nations. In this magnificent Doric building, which reminds one of a modern Parthenon, will be housed all services of the participant states of Heptapolis that will exercise through their academic representatives high monitoring of the development of letters, arts and sciences on a global scale. In this glorious building of seven floors, solutions will be sought to universal problems and decisions will be taken at a purely scientific and scholarly level about the difficulties that face current and future citizens of the world, as well as nature itself. This is the building complex UNESCO World Center that will be proposed for the establishment of services of UNESCO dealing with the conservation of monuments and megalithic works upgrading of education, knowledge and lifestyles of the citizens of Europe, America and Asia, as well as with the global programs of education, guidance, food and professional orientation for citizens of non-advanced nations. This is the United Nations Palace. For each item on the global promotion of literature, the arts and sciences, and for each proposal that concerns the health of the planet and saving the ecosystem, here in the same place, the heads of state will be able to consult with all scientific and academic authorities of Heptapolis. The heads of state will be able to consult with all scientific and academic authorities of Heptapolis and to take decisions with structured and joint agreements between political and scientific institutions with the support of intellectuals and technocrats. This marble building on the south side of the Acropolis is the Stoa of Treasures. There is the same building on the north side of the Acropolis. Here, the great benefactors of humanity and of Heptapolis, based on ancient Greek standards, could safeguard their material and other offerings in the sponsorship programs of Heptapolis. The Acropolis of Heptapolis will have four stairways for those who wish to climb to the top on foot, which will be used for emergency exits. It has special lifts for those with mobility disabilities, as well as lifts for visitors. Within the body of the Acropolis will be a special domed hall that will be proposed for use by the United Nations as a center for policy making in matters of letters, arts, science, technology and salvation of the ecosystem. This is the auditorium of the Olympians inside a petalon of Heptapolis. This closed area will be the world center for the operation of the Olympic Games in letters, arts, science and technology. The auditorium of the Olympians and the Aristophanian Theatre will carry out every four years international Olympiads in culture, the arts and sciences. Scientists, inventors, sculptors, painters, writers, poets, musicians, architects and artists will compete with the standard of award being the good and the noble, which represents the Olympic ideal. The contestants will pursue the victory that contributes to the furtherance of the spirit and of science, art, peace, democracy, the natural environment and the ecosystem. Citizens of every race, every country and every age. The commission of the Amphictyons will choose the excellent, while the Academy of Nations will award the honorary Olympic Kotinos, 
the Auditory of the Olympians and the Aristophanian Theatre will also be used, summer and winter, for plays and ancient tragedies. The history of the world has shown that behind every great work that marked the history of mankind was the hidden dream of its creator. The dream of Heptapolis of Paul Pisanos was a common dream for every Greek who hid within him the faith and hope that Greece once more, as in the days of Pericles, would become a world center for humanities, arts and sciences. Today, Heptapolis, more than ever, represents the dream of all peoples of the earth to join the spiritual and technological forces and work together under the same roof to solve the problems facing not only a citizen of earth, but the earth itself. Let us turn our eyes up toward heaven and the light and let us gaze at the face of creation, the face of God himself, who gave us a world of love, harmony and infinite beauty that we have turned into a vast plain of battle against one another and all together against nature and the ecosystem. The great values that we inherited from the ancient Greek world and the urgent needs of our age for the furtherance of literature, the arts, science and the ecosystem through a global coexistence of forces will send the message from end to end to the peoples of the planet. People of Earth, unite! And so, let us unite.